just slapping me silly on the airplane. How's it going, guys? And gals and gender non-conforming individuals. It's so nice to be here. I'm Jade Saxton, and this is uh, my panel. Um, and it's basically, oh, cute! Look, there's me on airbrushed me. Um, and Kana and Akatsuki and Yuki and Ferris. Um, have you guys had a good weekend so far? Yeah. It's been great. Um, yeah, so I am a Dallas-based actor. If you don't kind of know who I am or anything, and you're just like, I'll pop in here and see who this trick is. Uh, I work primarily out of Funimation Studios, which is located in a Dallas suburb called Flower Mound. Um, I've been voice acting for about 11 years, and uh, I've been directing now for two years, and I just, at the beginning of April, went full-time directing, so now even more anime all day. <laughs> and anime never stops. I've been up since 7.30 working on anime, y'all. It just never stops. Um, yeah, so this is... Oh, Dallas, y'all. There it is. That's awesome. I love Dr. Andy. He's the best. Woo! Yeah, Dr. Andy, everybody! Yeah! <laughs> yeah, we now have, like, these two beautiful new huge bridges they built to add to our cityscape that are really pretty. Um, but sometimes that one thing in the bottom right is like this huge omni hotel and when you're driving on the highway they light it up in different way and sometimes different ways and sometimes it like says words on it and it is very distracting <laughs> but i love the ball and i've actually never been up in the ball never in my i won't tell you how many years of life but i was born and raised uh, in dallas and the surrounding areas yeah there's one of our lovely bridges they're so cool i forget their names but um they really really add to our our cityscape um, yeah, so this is kind of like a, an AMA style thing, or I can just like randomly monologue about like my cat and, you know, like my Harry Potter love, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but yeah, AMA, I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't know, like it looks like maybe PG-13 AMA, near as I can tell, or wait, maybe, maybe PG. <laughs> PG, maybe. Um, I see, uh, yeah, hi. It, Carrie, Carrie, Kira? Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so if you guys have any burning questions, um, I will do my best to answer all of them. We can talk about anime, we can talk about pretty much anything. Um, and uh, unless, I'll try and give you like a kind of thing if it's like an NDA situation. In which case, um, there are cameras present, and you can always come up to me after the panel, and I'm happy to answer. I feel so tiny in this giant room. <laughs> Yay! Hi! <laughs> I think that mic works. Oh. It might be wireless if you want to... There we go. Yas. Hi. Hi. So, what do you do, like, to relax? Oh, what do I do to relax? Ooh, um, it kind of depends on the amount of relaxation I need, but I, I really like to do yoga. Anyone do yoga? Yeah? No? Cool. Um, I also like to do uh, meditation sometimes, and then, uh, of course, I like to binge watch stuff, just like the, you know, the best of them, and I like to have a nice glass of wine, and you know, binge watch a, a favorite show or something. Yeah, there's some yoga. I can't do that yet. Yeah, but that's a, uh, I'm a, I'm a bit of an introvert. I'm an INFJ. Um, I require a lot of alone time, especially like, um, I'm a Leo rising. I, sorry, I talk in like terms like that sometimes. So like I do have a, hey, look at me side. <laughs> But I, once I get out of that, I need like a lot of like hibernation and like just by myself um, with a book or a movie or something like that. Yes, I love red wine. Malbec is my favorite. It's an Argentinian wine. Yeah, it's really good. Hi. Hello. So it's almost your birthday. It's your birthday tomorrow, right? Yes. Everyone say happy early birthday to what's your name? Hannah. Hannah. Say. Yeah. Yay. <laughs> what's your question, Hannah? Um, what was it like working on Akiba's Trip, the animation? <laughs> Have any of you guys seen Akiba's Trip? 
or if you move one letter to the right, Akiba Strip, <laughs> which is a little bit more accurate. Um, <laughs> that was so wild and wacky and fun, and I played kind of the straight man in that, you know, to like all the other wackiness that was going on around. It was sort of one of those like same day projects, so I think it was really stressful for the director because it was like the same, I think 30 minutes after it came out in Japan, it was coming out uh, streaming in the US. So that made it like a really like, woo, go, 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 like crazy fast fun time. But um, I, I love that show. Like the comedy of that show, it is so wacky. Um, I loved the, uh, the ramen episode, like the ramen eating contest episode. I loved when she went on a date with, I can't remember his name. Tom Tzu. Tom Tzu. I love when she went on a date with him finally. Um, and I just love all the female characters in that. Uh, <laughs> they're just so funny, especially, um, you're better at the names than me, but the girl who's like constantly changing her cosplay like every five minutes. I, her name. I, met, I met Natalie Hoover who voices her earlier this Natalie year. Hoover, yeah. Yeah, she's great, but she has like this hamburger costume. Like there's so many different ones. Like she's, it's so fun. And and um, we, we, I think we did a commentary for that DVD and we like almost broke the microphone because <laughs> we were just so wacky in the in the booth like uh, doing that commentary together. Um, oh, I'm, it's uh, Arisa. Arisa, yeah. She's so great, and I love Natalie. So that was really fun and really wacky, and I liked, I liked getting to like beat up on Tamatsu. I didn't like. Oh, well, I won't give it away. But like, a, like there's a doppelganger sitch. Um, wasn't a fan of that part. Got me a little mad. <laughs> but yeah, it was awesome. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. <clears throat> Hi. Hi. I've come to all, well, most of your panels and your fans side yesterday, and talked about Carla, uh -huh. and I wanted to know how it was to work on that project in Fairy Tale, especially being Carla. Being Carla, well she's not um, the most fun like person to be around, or cat to be around is she, but she's definitely fun to portray. Um, I will break the PG for just a moment because I will tell you, uh, so cover your ears if you want, um, that my main direction in that is that Tyler Walker, who has directed the entire, I think we've dubbed, uh, there she is, 250 episodes this far of Fairy Tale, um, and three movies, question mark? I think three. And um, he calls her uh, Bitchy Mary Poppins. <laughs> Yeah, so like that's my character motivation and she always gets a little bit of a cocked eyebrow and she's like slightly British but not too fully British but sometimes I accidentally just fully slip into that. <laughs> like, but um, you know, I think she's got a really good heart and I really love her relationship with Wendy and like, you know, it's like even though I feel like they're probably the same age, she just treats her like she's like so much younger. I'm like, didn't you hatch out of an egg at the same time? Like, what's going on with you? Um, but it's been great. It's been awesome to kind of constantly, it's like a dream, I think, as an actor to like constantly be able to like take a break and then come back to, to a show and to a character that you love um, for like six years now. You know, it just keeps, it's the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> like, and I think this is the, we've been told that like this is the last year. All I know, sad face, a single tear. So yeah, it's kind of sad, um, a little bittersweet to say goodbye to all those people. Um, but we haven't done it yet, so we shouldn't like, you know, say goodbye yet. But um, I've heard that's the, what's happening. That's the word on the street. But yeah, it was, it's been, it's been a journey, it's been such a journey. Like she's had a lot of ups and downs and she's tried to be psychic. It's, she's not very good at it, but she tries, yeah. <laughs> but she can fly, like that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then if you saw the movie, something else weird happened. Did anyone see Dragon Cry? Yeah, that was weird, right? That thing that happened, I won't give it away. But it was like, how do I voice that? Like, what do I, uh, I feel like I gotta alter it slightly. <laughs> but it was brief, but it was interesting and like fans had been tweeting to me about that moment for a long time. Thanks so much for your question. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. So do you have a home st studio that you record in or is it all at Funimation? I don't. A lot of actors do for like different auditions and stuff like that, but I work and I direct up there so much. Um, that 
everyone that's doing stuff for Funimation dubs comes into a recording a recordio, a studio to record. Um, if you're unfamiliar, like with kind of how that works or what that looks like, um, it's set up so you're like in what I call the fishbowl, or sometimes what they call whisper rooms, which is like a makeshift studio. But some of them are built in. But anyways, you're in a little studio with a uh, a window. And there's a director and an engineer outside, and it's just you alone in the studio. And you have two monitors, one with the, the uh, anime and one with a script on it. And you preview in Japanese with a, at Funimation, you do it three beep style, like a beep, 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 and then you come in on the imaginary fourth beep. Look at that, that's Studio E at Funimation. If you're curious, there's, I think we skip a letter, but there's A, B, C, D, E, F, G, we skip H, don't know why. I and J. Um, and I, uh, I direct out of Studio I, but that's Studio E right there. Um, where we stand and we have preview and uh, that we come in the second time. That's Austin Tyndall. You guys know him? Yeah, he's fun. <laughs> Wait, that's Studio F. That's Caitlin's studio. Caitlin Glass, because you can see all of her little plushies that she has in there. <laughs> and like she used to have a sticky note that like was hanging on the bottom of her. I think is that free? Is that what's on the screen there? Maybe. <laughs> what? Prince of Stride. Prince of Stride. Okay, so close, right? <laughs> one's about running. One's about swimming. I don't know. Um, she used to have a sticky note that would like stick on the bottom of that screen that said, "You amateurs are ruining my vision." Just to be funny, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, so did that answer your question? I don't, but a lot of people do. Like they make like a little closet studio and then I know sometimes at hotels like they'll create like a pillow fort closet recording studio situation for themselves and then record on their phones for auditions and whatnot. Yeah, thanks. Hi. Uh, so did you like um, working with all the voice actors of Fairy Tale? Um, so we don't get to work necessarily with them since it's like that since we're just alone in there but I you know what's cool about conventions and and stuff like that that's where I, like I first kind of met a lot of those people um, and, and got to know them and um, but when I'm hearing their voice and like as far as like acting if they're already recorded before I record I, I love that and I love like I I seriously still and developed a major major voice crush on Brittany Karbowski who voices Wendy because she has this like adorable rasp thing going on and like she can do this what has been called the uh, the tea kettle scream like she I'm sure you've heard it a million times as Wendy and she sounds like a tea kettle going off um, yeah, and this past year we got to finally, a bunch of us got to do a panel together when they were re releasing the final manga for the series. And so myself and Jeremy Lee, who plays Lucy, and Brittany Karbowski, who plays Wendy, and Tyler Walker, the director, and Newt Pittman, who plays, um, I lost it, uh, Gray, uh, and... Who else? There's one. But we all got to like finally hang out together and like do a panel together. Oh, and Tia Ballard, who plays Happy. Uh, and it was really, really fun like to get to goof off and like, you know, do like little improvs with each other and everything. But everyone is, the people that I met that I've actually had the opportunity to meet are super, super fun people. And I mean, everyone kind of, I think you kind of, you got to give your all to these characters and your all to these moments because they're so larger than life. So it's, it was really great. Yeah. Thank you. What's up? Hello. So my question is, uh, how has it been from going to an anime voice uh, actor to an anime voice actor and ADR director? <clears throat> um, it's been really humbling. Um, it's been really helpful and I've learned so much. It was really, really scary at first, even though it was something I wanted, I think, with any big dream you have, like you have the, the, the dream and the anticipation and then like the fear, like the major fear of like failure and of like ah, just not knowing and you know kind of you know jumping into the deep end of a pool and just going for it and like learning to swim as you go um, and not drowning, I didn't drown if I'm following that metaphor there. Um, but yeah, um, it's it's really helped like so much. It's helped me as an actor. And like now that when I switch back and forth, which I do 
every single week. Um, I mean, I just feel like so much more informed and better uh, with what I'm doing on both sides. And like when I go and I'm directed by another director, like I just really understand more what they're trying to do, everything they're trying to do, and that they have like a million other things in their head besides like the exact thing that I just did. Like, cause I know what it's like to, there's Caitlin. Yeah, that's Studio F, y'all. She is the most decorated studio at Funimation. So many plushies, so many keychains. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, cause it's funny when you're an actor, you're, I don't know if you know this about actors, but they're actually really insecure people, which is why they overcompensate, <laughs> act wacky sometimes. Um, most of them are, including myself, just, you know, you can get really insecure about things. Um, and so sometimes beforehand, when you, I was in the studio giving a line, I would be like, they're not saying anything. Like, maybe they hate everything I did and they want to fire me and never ask me to come back to here again. But now that I've been in the, inside the headspace of a director, I'm like, they're probably not thinking anything about that. They're probably thinking about, like, a million other things. Like, what was said, like, four lines back when they recorded it two days ago. Like, just trying to really, like, fit the puzzle together. Um, and so it's, it's been really, really helpful. Um, and I, I like it. I like the challenge. I like being able to kind of, after, you know, 11 years, being able to kind of take on this responsibility and this honor as well to be able to kind of have my hands in like all the, the characters and all the aspects of uh, production. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Hi. Um, so I wanted to know, I'm a really, really big fan of Steins Gate, Ooh. Um, and I heard that there's another season coming out, but that it's going to be like an alternate ending or different, and I'm not looking for spoilers necessarily, I just wanted to know if you knew, like, is it going in a completely different direction? Or so it's, um, it's Steins Gate Zero, and we've already started dubbing it, and I think, I might be mistaken, but I think the first episode is out. Yeah. Do what? Say it again. So two is out tomorrow, so episode one is already out, but it is an alternative timeline. Okay. Um, so it's a different, without giving too much away, it is, yeah, it is like a little bit, you know, because time travel and all that, but um, it, it, yeah. I'm interested to see where it goes too, but with the nature of, uh, of simulcasting, like we're not necessarily, we don't get to see like all the, all the episodes ahead of time to know exactly what happened. So it's kind of exciting for us too to kind of follow along in the journey. But I was really excited to be able to hop back in and, and, and do Ferris again and be able to voice her again and, and play with Okabe and like, you know, just do all that fun meow noises and kitty cat things and just act ridiculous. I definitely miss that. And it's always kind of fun and exciting and cool and like something that I, I haven't done in like, God, how long has it been? Seven since, but there was a movie. There was a movie, and I think that was a little bit sooner. But it's definitely been at least I think four years or maybe three years since having done that voice. So yeah, yeah, check it out. Do you have a, a Funimation subscription? I absolutely do. Yes, you can go watch it like right now on your phone. Just ignore me. <laughs> yeah. No, that's my plan for when I get home then. Yay! Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi! I just ate the... Cool. <laughs> so you're one of the actors who uh, work with both Funimation and Sentai. Mm -hmm. I wanted to know what's it, what it's like uh, commuting between the two, how that works with your schedule, and uh, how did you develop a working relationship with both studios? Um, so I first started working for Sentai uh, my, by a recommendation from Monica Rial. Um, who has done many, many things for Sentai, formerly known kind of as ADV. Um, and so she uh, is a wonderful, wonderful person and just like suggested like, hey, this girl's really good. I've worked with her a lot. And so I was able to um, get an audition and get like a, a, a little casting. Um, they, uh, they, to my knowledge, at least for the projects that I've done for them so far, are not doing like a simulcast, like broadcast kind of schedule, like a weekly schedule. Look at those sultry eyes, Monica, yes. They actually have um, two going on right now. Um, I'm not involved in those, so the ones that I've done, like I've been able, as far as when you were asking about like the scheduling thing, like I go and I'll record like half a season at a time, uh, like for Log Horizon or more recently, um, Food Wars. 
uh, I played Mega Man Food Wars. Um, and so I'll go down for like a day or two days and just do it all at once. And so that way I'm not like having to go down uh, like once a week like you would have to. It's, it's trickier, I think, for those who live in Houston and ha are doing the broadcast style dubs for Funimation because they have to be able to come once a week. <laughs> Like, sorry, but we also uh, have what we call Source Connect now, um, which is, it, it's still in development. It's not like 100% perfect, but we can connect with studios in LA and Houston and New York um, for actors who really, really can't like come in every week. But like, I know they did that for Attack on Titan and for different projects that like had a lot of LA based actors and and whatnot, but I know like people like Todd and Jeremy uh, still come back and do like different fairy tale things, just depending on their schedules. But sometimes they have to do that. So, um, did I answer your question? <laughs> I think I did. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. Uh, I met you yesterday at the autograph session. I told you how much I liked your portrayal of Yoriko in Tokyo Ghoul. Oh, thank you. I was dressed up as the female Naruto. Mm. So my uh, my question is. Uh, how hard is it for voice actors to actually match the like their lines with the lip flaps of the anime characters? And like, what's the process they go through to matching the script with the, with the anime characters? Uh, okay, yeah. So we generally the process goes: uh, we get the episode, and we have in-house uh, Funimation. At least we have in-house translators uh, who. Um, who kind of take the entire episode and translate it character by character. And then we have script adapters who take whatever the base translation is and like, if it's like, hi, how are you? Isn't it a lovely day? If that's like what the, the Japanese said, but like if ours is like, if, the, if these are the flaps and it's like, hi, how are you? Isn't it a lovely day today? And like seven more things or whatever happen. So then our adapters will, um, create like what is you know about the same line or almost the same line and just a different way of saying it while watching uh watching it um and they have access to like slow slow down the frames or look at the uh, the animation and like take it back and like you know do it over and over until they're trying to match the mouth movements or the, the mouth flaps as best they can and so by the time it gets to the director and the actor um it's not always like exactly perfect like depending on the actors like speech patterns, their speed, their speed. Um, some actors talk faster, some talk slower, some characters are just kind of have a different characterization depending on age or type. And so we're able to easily adjust it, or sometimes not so easily, it just depends honestly, um, in that moment. Um, but it's all mostly done ahead of time for us so that it's not quite so hard and we can just make little adjustments here and there and add like a word here, take away a word there. Um, but you know, there are times when we have to like completely just rework the line, like right then and there in the moment. Yeah, thank you. Hi again. <laughs> I was wondering um, if you guys record multiple animes all at one time in the studio, or if you take turns with each studio. Um, yeah, um, it slowed down somewhat. <laughs> when I first started, we had nine studios running 10 a.m. to 10 p.m with uh, nine daytime directors um, directing two shows at once and nine nighttime directors directing one show at once. Um, right now, they've moved to, that was when we were doing a lot of, like the daytime directors um, who work 10 to six primarily, were doing like a broadcast style and then a DVD style, which meant there's more flexibility with a DVD style because it's not like having to have weekly uploads. But now the daytime people are doing two broadcasts each and so what they do is have the nighttime people are like their assistants for one of their shows. So like right now I'm directing High School DxD season four, but I'm also directing Kakuryo Bed and Breakfast for the Spirits, but my AD is Tia Ballard, and she directs at night um, with what isn't available to finish in the number of hours we're given during the week. Um, but that way we have uh, plenty of people on hand, but like, yeah, every and every studio is like that, so. Studio A has two animes, Studio B has two, Studio C, Kyle, I think last season had three or four for whatever reason, because he had like all these little shorts and different things. And also, that being said, like we're also still doing like post-production for other shows that we directed like six months ago. 
Um, so that's why when you first got here, I was like, anime never ends, and I've been up since 7.30. I've been doing like mixed reviews and final passes for Convenience Store Boyfriends, which is a show that I directed like six months ago. So you're also like weaving that in there, and you're like, what's going on in my head? So many stories, but... <laughs> But it's, it, I mean, it's always exciting and fun, and there's plenty of people there to support you, but yeah. Lots of anime, because here's the thing, like, and it's awesome and it's cool, even though it's like a learning process and it's fast, but like, don't you love that you can go to Netflix and like binge or like watch so many things? I mean, that's what like Funimation is trying to do and a lot of the anime studios are trying to do, give you the, the same sort of, of access and like to stream it. There's Convenience Store Boyfriends. Has anyone seen that little? Aww, people have seen that little sweetheart show. Sarah Wheaton have too, it's here this weekend, plays um, one of the leading females in that, but not that girl that you see on the screen. She plays Miharu. And that's Justin Reiner and Rico Fajardo on the left. Um, but, yeah, um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's, it's just, oh, I know, like about the Netflix and the Hulu and like giving you that same sort of experience to be able to to get to the entertainment you want when you want it. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Hi, hi. Hi. I just want to say with the simulcast and the DVDs and everything, thank you so much. You're working so hard. Thank you. Thank you. Because anime's like this, yes, they're coming in faster, but I know you guys are working 10 times as hard day and night, so thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. And I heard that you were a fan of Harry Potter. Huge fan! <laughs> so, I'm a Hufflepuff, so yes. I'm in your house is. Well, okay, girl. Like, I... I... Like, I feel like you change over time. <laughs> so, when I originally sorted on, um... What's it called? Pottermore. Yeah, On Pottermore, um, Pottermore uh, I was diehard Gryffindor. <laughs> and I still feel like if the sorting hat was put on my head, I would be like, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Um, but then when I resorted like 10 years later, I was totes a slith. <laughs> like, and I was like, this isn't real. But then when I like got my, uh, uh, my Patronus, it was a snake. And I was like, confirmed, I guess. Like, what the heck? So I'm like a griffin slith or a slither griff. I don't know. I feel like, I feel like I just try to promote house unity. <laughs> Um, but maybe I'm like mostly Gryffindor in my heart, but I, I think with what you were saying and all of the things you gave me, like, I think I am pretty ambitious. Yes. I think I do have those qualities. Um, and you know, Snape was a, was a, a Slytherin and... He was, and he did so good at the mm -hmm. last moment, right? Like, it's just Voldemort that made it all... Yeah. Uh, so, but thank you. And R.I.P. R. Alan Rickman. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome. Happy Pond. Thanks. <laughs> Pay attention. I shall drop the bass only once. <laughs> um, that is great. Thank you. Hi. Um, so you may have meant this as a joke, but uh, oh. could you talk about your cat a little bit? Because I'm a oh. proud cat dad. I love hearing things for babies. <laughs> You're, what kind of cat do you have? Um, I have three of them. Ooh. Sweetest little, like, long hair white thing, and a tiny black one who's just the meanest, and a gray one who's kind of in between them. And what are their names? Do they have fun, nerdy names? Uh, they have old lady names. <laughs> uh, there is Virginia, Cordelia, and uh, Sierra's kind of odd one out. What's the what, last one? Sierra. Sierra. Like Sierra Mist. Yeah. Or, you know, like, like the place. Um, uh, um, so yeah, I have one cat who's too evil to allow any other animals around, um, but I love her anyways, and her name is Granger. I know, shocker, Hermione Granger. Uh, she was gonna be hairy, because um, when I saw her photo, do you guys know what Craigslist is? I don't know, like I feel like maybe the generations, some people don't know what it is, but I found her on Craigslist at like a farm, like about 45 minutes outside of Dallas. Um, and I saw a little picture of her when she was like three weeks old. And she had like, she's a, um, a tortie, which, <laughs> which is like a more black and orange um, kind of calico kind of kitty. And she had like a little orange like thing that looked like the Harry Potter scar. And I was like, I must have her. 
she will be mine. And, but then, you know, she was a she, so decided on Granger. And I mean, I call her Grangy the Pooh for Princess Buttercup or some really other awful things that I cannot say right now. But um, yeah, I love her, she's wonderful. She's getting, I think she must be like 10 years old now. So she's super lazy and fat. And she wakes me up three times a night to give her food, which I know is my fault as a cat mom. I have uh, made this behavior continue, but I like sleeping, so I just give in. I just give in and feed her, but yeah. And then she'll sleep the whole day, like that's the problem. I just want someone to come over during the day and do what she does to me at night to her and just like start scraping on everything and wake her up and yeah, ruin her day. <gasps> that's Grangy the Poof! That's my cat! Y'all, I got so excited. That's her hot little chili pepper. It has catnip in it. She loves it. Look how fat she is. Oh, poofy lady. Yeah, I always say, poofy lady, mama loves you. And I have a song I sing to her, y'all. I get weird. Everyone gets weird with their animals, right? Yeah. Yeah. Look at that little poof. If you went to try to pet her in that moment, your hand would come away bloody. <laughs> but, you know, I love her anyways. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Grangy. <laughs> Hi. So, Jade, I read an article the other day said that the uh, overseas market for anime worldwide has grown uh, 189% in 2013. Wow. I was wondering if working from the inside, if you've noticed that kind of growth. Well, that's, I think that has to be because of the streaming, like 100%. It was like, I remember the year that we, I think it was, I don't know if it was 2013, but Gosh, I guess it must have been like four years ago when we decided to like switch to uh, a broadcast style. And it was just sort of like a really quick like shift, fast and furious. And like all of a sudden I was, I was working three times as much as an actor. So I definitely noticed the increase. Like it was awesome. I was like, yes. Um, Cause I was, you know, getting more roles and more opportunities and there was more anime that being produced overall, um, so I definitely can can see that. And it's, it's really cool because I think more countries are getting involved in dubbing their own things in their own languages. Um, a lot still listen to the English dub, but I know like Germany does a lot of dubs and, and uh, uh, I think Korea does a lot of their own dubs and like Mexico does a lot of their own dubs. To be fair, a lot of that growth was like China and Taiwan, but the US is number three. Awesome, yeah. You sound like you know more than I do about this. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I definitely felt it. I definitely felt the like, ooh, phew. And that was part of the switch from like everyone, I think also switching from having a, ca like purchasing cable to like, I don't know about y'all, like I don't have cable, but I have subscriptions to Hulu and Netflix and I just have a smart TV and like that's, I feel like that's all I need. Oh, and I have a Funimation one and a Crunchyroll one too, but you know, like I just have all the <laughs> things. And then you know, we all just like steal each other's things. Let's do everything legally, but like I think it's fine to borrow a friend's HBO Go code, right? I don't know, I shouldn't say that probably. But um, <laughs> you know, like Netflix has kind of even made that, and Hulu has made that like possible, like where you have like separate profiles and like you can kind of share, um, but yeah. I think it's just part of that shift of like how people want to receive their entertainment. But what's cool about anime, I will say, is since, since it is such an art driven, like it starts with the art, um, I think the fans and like the people still really want to get like the cool box sets and get the things because like it's so cool to have that like thing or that like figure or whatever because it's so art driven and like that's why I think we all love it so much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Are you a shark? Are you just like a shark? <laughs> That's awesome. I love it. <laughs> yes. Are you like the left shark from the Katy Perry performance? Yes. I love it. Yes. <gasps> I got distracted by the shark. <laughs> Hi. I do when there's time. I'm already spending eight to ten hours a day watching anime. 
um, because I'm directing it. <laughs> um, I've already spent four hours today watching anime. Uh, the ones I direct, I watch all of it, the entire subs and the entire dubs. The dubs I watch probably six times each, every episode, just to get, because you have to, to complete it from finish to end with all the different ways you have to review it. Um, of the ones that I've been in, there aren't enough hours in the day for me to like sleep and you know do yoga or whatever, <laughs> play with my cat. But there are definitely some that I have uh, watched all the way through. Uh, for example, one that I've seen multiple times just because I feel like it's so easy and it, it doesn't take up like 700 hours is Wolf Children. I've done, I've seen many screenings of that and watched that and like screened it for friends and. Um, I've also definitely watched Steins Gate. I was totally hooked all the way through on that. Um, and uh, Death Parade is another one that like, I popped in to like check it out and I was like, I can't stop watching this. Has anyone seen Death Parade? If you haven't, like highly recommend, highly recommend. It's such a unique. And also Michiko and Hachin. Has anyone seen that? Yeah. Definitely recommend that one. It's so unique. It's a 24 episode journey. It was on Toonami at one point too, but yeah. I try to, but there's there's a lot. There's so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Hello. Hi. So I I at least heard that Funimation does a lot of individual voice acting. Uh, if given the opportunity as a director, would you rather do a group session? I think that it would not work as well with the way that we have to to get it done um, because it's it's not like what we call prelay, which is laying down the voices before it's animated, like for original animation, say like Pixar or Disney or some of the stuff on Cartoon Network, Adventure Time, um, South Park, stuff like that, um, where they can do prelay and sometimes even mocap on your face to help with the animation. So then you can say whatever they want and then they can go draw it. Like, the, the best joke that we have at the studio is like, when something's not working, I'm like, one sec. Hey, Japan, I was wondering, could you uh, reanimate this for us? Because, like, you know, we can't do that. Like, we have to uh, do what, with what we're given, um, with uh, what was already, already animated for us. And so it, it doesn't really work to do it except for one person at a time. Um, I mean, I definitely think that would be super fun to be in a big room with everyone. Uh, doing it all, but I think it would like time-wise, it just wouldn't work with dubbing. But I know they do it a lot for prelay. But yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Hi again. Hi. Um, thank you. <laughs> What's your favorite voice act you've done? Blech. What's your favorite voice act you've done? It's so hard, because it's like choosing a favorite child and all that, and I'm sure you guys have heard that before. Um, I will say some of my more recent favorites have definitely been Kana. Like, I love Kana so much. I just want more of Kana. Um, I also do really love Hachin from Ichiko and Hachin and Nona from Death Parade. There she is. That sweet little baby angel. Um... Carla's always, <laughs> she's always a, a trip, she's fun. Um, trying to think, oh, another recent favorite, did anyone see Love Tyrant? I love Guri, she reminds me so much of, of Harana and like the energy and wackiness, but I feel like she has an even other level of silliness and I really like uh, voicing Guri, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yay. <laughs> One, she is super cute, mm -hmm. um, and two, I was wondering if you ever try and steer your fans away from getting bootleg copies and pirating stuff. My husband and I buy, of course, all the official stuff, uh, mostly from right stuff, anime, Crunchyroll, Funimation. Um, we went to Teco and Monica Real talked a lot about, um, guys, don't bootleg stuff. Yeah. And I was wondering if you ever go over that during conventions or kind of steer away from that. Um, I, I usually, uh, it comes up at least once a convention because someone like yourself will like ask about it or talk about it or somehow that it will get shifted to that direction. I mean, it, it, it's only hurting the industry. It's hurting the industry. Like, it's making it so that we can't, you know, have as much revenue as we need to produce what we need to produce because people are pirating everything. 
I mean, and it's just not cool, y'all. It's not cool. I, I think I do a lot more policing of that online, uh, on like Twitter and whatnot, different things like that, that people have like sent to me or said to me or whatever. I'm like, is that a legal thing you're posting? Like, is that from a legal site? Um, there's just so much of that happening. So, I mean, if you can, try to watch unpirated, like, stuff. Um, I mean, and I think, like, I'm not, like, trying to diminish anyone's, like, finances or budgetary restrictions or any part of their life, and I want people to feel happy and entertained and, like, you know, they can do this stuff, but, like, it's $6 a month for a Funimation subscription. Like, it's not highway robbery, you know? Um, it's less than, I think, Netflix or Hulu. Um, uh, and, you know, actually a lot of, uh, we, we're packaging a lot of different projects now to go on Netflix and Hulu, so if you don't want to do that, and there's certain animes you just want to watch on those sites, like, to legally stream them, um, you know, I, I, it, it seems to come up a lot around certain types of shows, too, that, like, maybe have censoring beforehand, before the DVD, and, like, people get mad about that. I'm like, chill, just chill. You'll get your uncensored version for DVD, <laughs> like. But yeah, um, yeah, I think that's mostly how it, it comes up for me, is like on a social media type thing. But thank you for not pirating. I appreciate you. It happens a lot too, just so you know, if you are interested in sort of, I don't, I, don't know, I don't know if I'd really call it activism, but whatever, like kind of look out, be on the lookout. It does happen a lot in like the dealer's room too, like people selling pirated products. Um, and there's usually a way you can kind of notice that, like like wall scrolls and stuff like that, like if they don't have the certain like insignary things like at the bottom, like saying like what studio and whatnot and like that, like or if it's like super blurry logo at the bottom of something, that's a really good indication that they don't have a high enough res file and they're trying to pirate like a, a wall scroll or a poster or a mouse pad or whatnot. Um, usually conventions of this size are really good at kind of policing that on their own and being like, you can't sell that, like that's illegal. But some of the smaller ones, it's harder to keep up with, you know, with smaller staffs. Yeah. Hello, I just wanted to say I'm a big fan of Love Live. Thank you. <laughs> and I wanted to ask if you could become any character that you have voice acted, which character would you become and why? Who <laughs> become them? Oh. I don't know. <laughs> That's so hard. Um I feel like some of them have had like really tragic things happen in there. There's a lot of tragic, I don't, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> maybe, maybe Kana, like, <laughs> she seems pretty well cared for and can take care of herself pretty well, like, as a little baby dragon. And she can fight really well and she just gets to like, eat everything she wants and have like Lady Choru and Miss Kobayashi just there to like take care of her you know and you can kind of like re revert back to childhood and just feel like loved and cared for <laughs> yeah thank you thank you so much hi um I wanted to ask if it's more difficult to dub Konako in High School DxD because of the animation change I mean Maybe I'm crazy, but like it's not, to me it didn't seem like that different. I'm directing the show this season. Um, but also know that like, I mean, I'm, I'm hopping around and have hopped around in the three years since, not like having just done like season three animation. I don't, I can't really tell like what, and you know, I'm going from studio to studio trying to do my best to act and match flaps for other shows. And so to me, it's just like, I'm taking the challenge and I'm meeting it in that moment. And I'm not, I'm not, I haven't been like super aware of any major like crazy animation changes that have like affected the way that I need to act out the, the role of the scene. I did think it was interesting. I think it was in episode one, um, where it seemed like for one or two scenes, they like changed her hair color. They changed Konako's hair color, which doesn't affect my acting really, but I, I did notice it. I was like, 
what she's white hair that's what her hair is supposed to look like but it almost like looked kind of blonde or something like that but I mean I have been getting some feedback online like some people feel very strongly they're like it's the worst animation ever I'm like is it calm down um, I mean I don't know I, ho I guess I hope you still like it and you hope that I hope that you still like the the way that we're bringing it to life but I personally maybe it's just because I watch too much anime like haven't noticed like a super drastic difference yet so I don't know <laughs> <It's all good. laughs> thank you so much thank you <laughs> hi do you have a question <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I'm getting over <laughs> So, um, uh, was getting into Kanako's character um, difficult? I mean, you've got this cute little character, and yet she's supposed to be like tomboy with this, um, uh, like, sort of deep yet not voice, and she's a kitty. Was that difficult to be cute and tough at the same time? I don't think for Konako. I think she is so chill and all about it. Like, and and there's so there were so many just like sassy one-liners that she got to say, and I really like playing those like sort of deadpan characters. And she was kind of one of the first deadpan characters. That I'm I sorry, deadpan? Not familiar. No. Oh, deadpan is like really oh. just like flat like. I'm not even gonna, like, it's almost like on the edge of sarcasm. Like, whatever. Yeah, like, mm-hmm, okay. <laughs> whatever, you perv. You know, like, it's just like, she's just like, deadpan, like, I'm not gonna give you any full emotion, really. Like, this is all you're getting. I mean, her, she developed, especially in season three, when we got into the backstory with her sister, and you found yeah. out about her. We also find out she's got a bit of a big sister aspect to herself with Gaston. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like how she tortured him for a while. <laughs> that was fun. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. So I actually find her one of the more easier voices that I do because it is just kind of like sitting there, right there. There's no, like, she never really yells anything. She's just pretty chill. Yeah, but she, it's, despite her being chill, she's mm -hmm. actually a lot of fun. Yeah, but that's what's cool is, like, normally with other characters who are, like, taking a, a giant piece of something and throwing it or fighting and kicking where it's like a lot more excerpt in the voice. Like for her, she's just like, eh. Like, and like something will go like 50 feet flying because she's so strong as a rook. Like, she's so powerful. Yeah. Yeah. That was really cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. Hello. What was the first show or movie uh, that got you into anime in the first place? Um... I think, like a lot of people, I was watching anime without knowing that it was anime. Like when I was watching like My Little Pony or things like that, or like He-Man or She-Ra or whatever when I was little. Um, but I, I kind of discovered like the, the studio and like where it was dubbed and like what kind of dubbing was through uh, an ex-boyfriend of mine who was a huge Dragon Ball fan. So um, he would like for every, birthday or Christmas or whatever, like, that's all he ever asked for for, like, six years of our relationship was, like, Dragon Ball DVDs, and it was really hard to find, I think, back then. Like, I would have to go to, like, several stores to find whatever the most recent, like, thing that had just come out, um, and he, and we watched it together, so that was kind of my, yeah, <laughs> that was kind of my, uh, my introduction to knowing that it was anime, like, the actual term, yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you. Um, we have like time for maybe like one more? Any more? If not, um, I could say, oh, here we go. Yes. So if you could choose like one thing to do when you're directing, like to change something of like the actual animation, would you? So like a scene that you don't particularly like want to be there, would you like? If you could. Oh, you mean like story themes? Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I think so. There have been definitely been times when I've been like, really? That's where this is going? Like, if I could change like what was happening for one of the characters, I think there have definitely been a few moments in like every every show where I'm like, oh, come on. 
Like, why are you doing that, Konico? Or <laughs> why is this happening in the show? Uh, yeah, and then, of course, um, but I mean, that that doesn't as happen as, as much because you're just kind of in the moment, like, going along with the characters. But it's more like that I wish, like I said, like, we could call Japan and be like, can you reanimate this? Like, it would be really helpful for the way we need to say it in English. <laughs> more so like that. <laughs> Thank you. Hey guys, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you. And if anyone is interested, um, I would love uh, to get like a group photo with everybody, if that's okay. Um, and then I can post it on Twitter or whatever, and you can go like snag it if you're into that. If everyone wants to like come to the front, if you don't, cool. Like, bye. Thank you for coming. But if you do, that would be so awesome. Do you mind taking it?